Have you ever heard of an instance where a group of attorneys are arguing that they put on a witness who lied on the witness stand and they now have to argue this in order to save their own butts from a potential uh, bar reprimand from a state bar association. It sounds bizarre, but that's apparently what we have here. Uh, for those of you uh, new to my channel, new to, uh, new to this whole thing, if you just happen to come across this video here, my name is Michael Strickland. I was the news videographer who was attacked by a gang when I was out filming a protest in 2016. And in order to stop the gang from doing grave harm to me, I drew my lawfully carried firearm on them. And then I was the one arrested, charged with multiple crimes, and uh, ultimately convicted of multiple felonies, all for not wanting to be beaten to death by a gang. So while well, this channel started off as a political channel, it's sort of uh, evolved into a channel about my case. So uh, here's the latest here. For those of you following the uh, latest stuff on this case, I filed a bar complaint this past December because it appears as though that the DAs, uh, Kate Molina and Todd Jackson, uh, put on a witness who lied or they withheld discoverable evidence because this witness, Benjamin Carenza, He's the guy who started the fight. He's the one who organized the gang. He's the one who began to, what I consider, physically assault me and then chase me up the street. He is claiming that he sent uh, multiple emails back and forth with the Portland police about what had happened. Well, those emails were never included in discovery. And so uh, I filed a bar complaint about this. So Kate Molina asked to extend the time on her response uh, two different times here. So what was originally due, I think, in... Sometime in uh, the you know first week or two of January, uh, suddenly got pushed back to uh, February 17th after a couple of those extensions here. And uh, Mike Schmidt, the elected district attorney, uh, he, as I'm sure many people watching the channel are familiar with his escapades, uh, he drafted the letter here. And here's what he has to say. February 13th, 2023. We received your email. In the email, you state that your office received correspondence from Michael Strickland. Oh, the following is an account from our memories, our own email archives, physical case file, electronic file, and uh, transcript, blah, blah, blah. He gives a brief uh, rundown of what had happened. Interesting that he leaves out the part where the gang attacked me and I tried to get away from them and they kept running after me. Uh, so let's see here. Here's the bulk of what he's arguing. During the trial, a witness for the state, Benjamin Carenza, said that he had exchanged emails with the Portland Police Bureau and the district attorney's office related to this case. Based on our review of our own email ar archives, the case file, uh, physical file, electronic file, and trial transcript, we can confirm that aside from the police report containing Mr. Carenza's statement, which was discovered uh, to the defense, there are no emails or other written statements from Benjamin Carenza that would be subject to the discovery statutes and certainly nothing containing exculpatory information. To the limit that we have emails from Mr. Carenza, they were related to his safety concerns regarding his participation in the prosecution as a witness. We'll get to that a little later. And his rights as a crime victim and post-conviction concerns concerning Mr. Strickland's compliance with his court-ordered supervision. We have included copies of the emails we received from Mr. Carenza with this submission. So those emails were basically all sorts of deranged paranoia from Carenza, talking about how he was scared that I or people I know are, are threatening him, attacking him, trying to stop him from testifying, whatever. I don't know anything about that. I didn't direct anybody to do that. I personally never told anyone to do that. I personally never contacted Carenza. I don't want to. My only interaction with this guy has been him coming up from behind me, pushing and shoving me, shouting, get the fuck out of here, get the fuck out of here. And me saying, whoa, dude, don't put your hands on me. Don't put your hands on me. That That's the only interaction I've ever had with this guy. In fact, I've specifically directed people to not contact this guy because of his dangerous and intimidating behaviors. So basically what we have here is the DAs are now admitting that they put on a witness who lied on the witness stand during trial under oath in Multnomah County Court. If you're a defendant in Multnomah County or if you are, you know, an, an attorney representing someone and uh, Kate Molina or Todd Jackson are on the other side, just know that they have a tendency to put on witnesses who lie. 
You need to be prepared to deal with that, be prepared to call them out on their lies, be prepared to bring that up to the judge, because they should not be able to get away with that sort of behavior. So I filed my response with the state bar, um, and I basically uh, thanked them for uh, continuing to investigate this matter. What's interesting, though, is these emails that they included uh, the earliest one is dated July 15th, 2016, whereas Benjamin Carenza had testified that it was later that night after the uh, protest when he had gotten home, when he sat down and would quote, w- w- after the adrenaline had worn off, that's what he testified to, that he sat down, wrote the email to the Portland police, giving a narrative of what had happened, and he ultimately exchanged a few emails, I don't know how many, but it was plural, back and forth with the police, and those were never included in discovery. So, therefore, one of the following has to be true. Either Kate Molina, Todd Jackson, and Mike Schmidt are refusing to turn over these emails to both the bar and me, or the police did not forward the emails to the DA's office, or the state's witness lied on the stand under oath during trial, which is what they're trying to argue. Uh, I suggested to the bar that they uh, contact the uh, Portland police detectives who were working on the case to see if those, if, if they recall anything from these emails, uh, if they had forwarded them to the DA's office, or if somehow they had gotten lost, because as what's been established through uh, case laws is what the police know, the district attorneys are also tasked with knowing. Now, what's also interesting here is Kate Molina and Todd Jackson did not charge Carenza with perjury. So that indicates to me that they accepted his testimony as fact, which means that they, in, in that case, they're, they're saying that they violated their uh, rules of conduct by not providing the discovery. But if the emails do not exist and they put on a witness who lied and they did not inform myself, my attorneys, or the judge that their witness was untruthful, and this would also be an apparent violation of another one of the rules that they have to abide by, says uh, if a lawyer, the client, a lawyer's client, or a witness called by a lawyer has offered material evidence and the lawyer comes to know of its falsity, uh, the lawyer should take reasonable uh, remedial measures, including, if permitted, disclosure to the tribunal, which they did not do. So, I mean, the, the question is, who else is allowed to lie on the witness stand? How often does this happen? Is this happening in every case? If I were to have taken the stand in my own case and lied, would I have been able to just get away with it with no consequences? Would they have pursued some kind of perjury charges against me? I've been in some kind of trouble. Would there be some kind of a contempt of court? Or is it only certain people who are allowed to lie on the witness stand or only certain attorneys who are allowed to lie? So I'm uh, continuing to uh, pursue this and uh, we'll find out what the state bar concludes here as part of their investigation. Uh, In the meantime, you can check out uh, some of the other videos on my channel here relating to the case, including video of the actual incident, uh, you know, several other uh, parts of the audio from the trial, including another witness or two other witnesses who lied multiple times on the witness stand during the trial. Uh, And again, it seems that they're able to get away with this and face no consequences. So they're basically encouraging people to be untruthful under oath on the witness stand. Now, that's a that's just a dangerous path, and I I just I wish things didn't have to be like this. You know, I I I don't know how far down this path goes. I don't know what other kind of shady tricks they're doing, but just be aware if you're facing down Kate Molina and Todd Jackson on the other side, they could very well be putting on untruthful witnesses.